This is a Voron 0.1 3D printer. This pint-sized powerhouse is mini but muscular. It is finite but fast. It is diminutive but dynamic. Is this Tootie printer with a small footprint pointless, or are small printers far from futile? I'm Alan Mandic, Mandic really. Let's discuss it. So what the heck am I on about? Well, small 3D printers. I've got a pair of Voron Zeros here in front of me. And anytime I post about these or I see other creators post about small form factor builds, the questions inevitably come in. Why? Why would I want such a small build volume? Why wouldn't I spend that same money on a significantly bigger machine? Why are you bald? What prompted this video was that my video for this week fell apart, but also that I saw Chuck Hellebuck post on Twitter asking about these machines in particular, saying that he gets negative comments about the Ender 2 Pro being too small of a machine, but these have even smaller build volumes. Aren't these too small and restrictive? To answer these questions, I want to start off by just going right to the source, the Voron design team. After reaching out, I was told to ask Nemgria. Sorry if that's not how you pronounce that. And I asked the question, why the V0? And I got back what I should have expected, a pretty engineering response of what I would call the scope or the guidelines for the build. As it was presented to me, it was meant to be an enclosed machine using fairly off the shelf parts as much as possible, including the Maker Beam XL extrusions that this machine is made up of. And the goal was to produce ABS prints that were on the quality of the larger Voron machines in this small form factor. And the parts were designed to fit within its own build volume so it could be a self-replicating machine to produce more V0s or other Vorons. When I posed the same questions to Timit, I got the response of, rapid prototyping and quick chamber heating. This machine has a, such a small chamber volume that in his experience, he can heat this thing up, produce a prototype part, and then move on with his design before the chamber on his larger machines would even reach the temperature he wants. This makes a fair bit of sense. If we compare the internal cubic volume of space in the Voron Zero versus a 2.4 or my Bamboo X1, there's simply significantly less internal volume to the V0 than there is to those other machines to heat up and get ready to print things like ABS, ASA, polycarbonates, nylons. Rapid prototyping is why I built the 0.1. Right here I have one of my can cup designs, my canned grenade. Now this prints on an Ender 3, in my experience, in around 10 hours. I sliced it in Prusa Slicer today using the newer settings that they have in there, and I was able to get it down to eight hours and 27 minutes using my recommended settings for these designs. Great, this one right here in Greengate 3D PETG today on the 0.1, printed in two hours and 49 minutes. That means that I could print two or three of these in the time that an Ender 3 would take to print one, meaning I can make adjustments, revisions, and updates before I ever would have gotten one complete prototype previously. Design available for free download on thangs.com. Blizzard test. Of course, there is the elephant in the room, the big question I'm sure plenty of you are asking. What about the build volume on those little machines? I get it, 120 millimeter cubed build volume seems very limiting on paper, especially when you consider that this kit right here, the 0.2, costs the same price as the Elegoo Neptune 3 Max that I recently reviewed, and you can fit this machine into that machine's build volume with a ton of space to spare. On that subject, I need to ask you a question. Same question I asked in my Neptune 3 Max review, but it's kind of flip-flopped here. Do you need a big build volume? or do you want a big build volume? I print plenty of big stuff, but on a day-to-day -day basis, the majority of things I print, I believe fit in the build volume of a Voron Zero. And I'm willing to bet a lot of what you do would as well. I came up with a way to test this. This is by no means the most scientific testing method out there, but what I did was ask on Twitter, what's the most recent thing you've 3D printed or something you print on a regular basis? Just trying to get a slice of the 3D printing community to show me what's happening on a day-to-day -day basis for normal folks. That Twitter post got 21 usable responses. So I set out to print as many of the files as I could on a Voron Zero. On the table in front of me are results. 13 out of those 21 files printed on a Voron Zero with no modification whatsoever. Three were able to be printed with asterisks and only five just were not gonna work and I considered full on fails for this project. That means only 24% of files that folks provided to me for this, not knowing what I was doing with them, 
were not able to be printed in the build volume of a Voron Zero. That said, these are still not for everybody. Let's take a closer look at a couple of these prints that surprised even me, and then we'll get some final thoughts. First print I want to look at is this Mushroom Twist Container from 3D Printy. The largest portion of it is, of course, the mushroom cap itself. That fit on the bed of the V0, no problem. But slightly more impressive is actually the dots that get glued on to that mushroom cap. I was able to print all three of these in this pink Polymaker Polyterra PLA on the bed at one time. It took about 45 minutes to print all three of these. So yes, I had to run three separate prints on three separate beds for this print, but I wanted them three separate colors anyway, so I would have done that on any machine. Next up is one of the asterisks. This roof mounted spool holder is meant to be screwed up underneath of something to hold onto a spool of filament. And it fits with plenty of clearance, but I did have to scale it to 97% to make it fit on the bed of the V0. At 100% scale, it was just off of the bed and wouldn't fit. But I was able to make it print and it's still fully functional. This one honestly surprised me. I did not think this was gonna fit in the build volume, but it just did. This is a 3D printable candy machine that uses a mason jar. Fill up the jar with gumballs, stick it in the top of this thing, and you can twist the handle to dispense them. I don't have any mason jars or gumballs around to demonstrate it, but it was a really neat little design and it did fit without modification. And the last ones we'll talk about are Voron parts. This is the largest part of the gantry on a Voron 2.4, meaning that you could print all of the functional parts to make a Voron 2.4 or Trident on a Voron Zero. You could use one of these machines and print everything you need to build and get a functional Voron 2.4 or Trident and that it can then print its own larger components that won't fit on this. There are a couple other big positives I want to get to on these little machines real quick. Speed is an obvious one. The small form factor means short belt pads. It means that there's not a long extrusion that's going to flex. So there's a lot that can go into these machines to make them fast. Just look at 24-7 printing. Just posted a new record for the fastest benchy shaped object at sub two minutes and 30 seconds. Another big point, or little depending how you look at it, is power consumption. Energy prices have been going up around the globe. This 0.1 right here has a 150 watt power supply in it. It's only got a 60 watt bed heater and a 40 watt heater element in the hot end. While actively printing at high speed, this generally pulls less than 100 watts from the wall. That means it's going to be pulling less power than an old incandescent light bulb. Now, I completely acknowledge these machines are not for everybody. Not everybody can justify two, three dozen machines. So if you are limited on space, you can only have one, two, three printers. I can understand where the value proposition of the price to square millimeters of print volume is hard to justify when it comes to these. There's also having to build this machine yourself and having to print the parts for it in ABS or ASA, which you may not yet be equipped to print. It's great that these machines can print their own parts, but if you don't have one to do that with to begin with, where are you going to start to build one? The Print It Forward program exists, but that's a hurdle. There's also tuning. I didn't talk about the print quality that I got off of these because in my opinion, what you get out of a Voron is what you put into it. These are tinkering machines. The more you tinker and play and dial in and refine them, the better quality you can get out of them, or you can go the opposite way. Honestly, at this moment, both of these machines need a little love. The 0.2 hasn't really been fully tuned in since I built it, and the 0.1, it needs a bit of an overhaul to get it where I want it to be and to improve some resonance and some minor issues it has. Simply put, there are plenty of legitimate reasons why one of these little machines may not be for you. But I hope I showed that the build volume limitation on them is not as big of a hurdle as a lot of people seem to think it is. And maybe you could rethink how big of a machine you actually need. Don't just take my word for it, you can check it out yourself. Download Prusa Slicer if you haven't already. It's got profiles for Voron Zeros in it. Load up one of those and start slicing up models in it. You can both check out print time estimates, which I find to be fairly accurate, and see the build volume limitations for yourself and your work. I quite like these little printers. Maybe you will too. Oh, and why am I bald? Well, I'm not. I'm taller than my hair. 
also genetics. And generally I'm older than people seem to think I am. Guess in the comments. All right, folks, that's where we're gonna wrap it up for this one. I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, maybe you'll enjoy one of these, the Seabor Voron 0.2 review. Maybe that's the Voron for you or the other end of the spectrum, the Neptune 3 Max review. Get subscribed to ensure your 3D prints don't fail. It's not a guarantee, but it can't hurt. Thanks for coming around, folks.